Well, good evening, all. I wrap Stan, and here we are with your financial market wrap up. And this wrap up is for the evening, as we're hitting here now on Thursday, the 28th of December, the last Thursday of 2023. The time is right now, oh, getting on what, 6 30 p.m. Central Time. Let me start off by saying thank you for watching me during the year. I appreciate it. I wish you and your family a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, and I'll try to do my very best for you next year as well. Now, a little bit of a caveat. I noticed somebody wrote me today because we, we always get new people that are coming in from different services, looking at us, subscribing and so on. This is not where I put out my strategies. My strategies are in my morning subscriber videos. You go to the word research on our website and that is where you find what I do there. That is where I say buy here, sell there, do this. This is a review of what the day looked like, what I think the pros were doing, how the market is looking. The specific buys and sells are in those videos and in my twice daily written updates as well. That's how I do this. One of the reasons is the government says, hey, Ira, you can't just go out on TV and say, hey, buy here, put a stop there and so on. Where's your disclaimer? Where's the thing that the client has put out that he understands the risks associated, so on and so forth. I have been doing this since 1969. I know the rules. I obey the rules. That is my goal always. And I want to abide by the rules. Got it? All three ways. So you have to do the same thing and understand I can only do certain things here. I can talk the generalities. I can get very specific in my subscriber videos because they're not available to the general public. They're available only with the user ID, a password, and you've signed off that you understand all those risks. Make sense? I hope it does because it's the way it works. Now, do you want to get aggressive going into the end of the year? Do you want to be one of the few people actually trading between now and Monday, New Year's Day? I don't think so. I, I think you want to sit back, be very cautious, say, you know, I've got myself in a nice cash position or I'm watching markets that are still going. Example, I think I'm fairly loaded up on spiders and ETFs. That is where the positions are that uh, I've been following. We've got, if you follow me there, pretty good sized leads in the market. It just didn't come that way in the future. It's not that I didn't want it to, but the setups weren't quite the same. That's okay. Does that mean you're not in a runaway market in the stock market? Absolutely not. If you'll recall, in September, I did my first stock report. I predicted in that report at the end of September, a big decline October, a strong market into November, a powerful market, start the month off in December sideways, and then we finish off with the strong Santa Claus rally. If you're a viewer here and you're watching me, put a thumbs up if you know that I said that. I know what I did and I have the videos, and by the way, they're out there on YouTube. You can watch that part. You won't see the special reports. When I put up my reports to good for three business days, this isn't a history lesson. It's not out to prove as I were right or wrong. I'll tell you if I was right or wrong. Your job is when that report comes out, spend the time to go look at it, okay? Because they're gonna be right there. I'm also gonna go back in 2024 and we'll have in January a webinar at some point and then February and so on. So we'll go back and start doing those. By my design, I took off the past two and a half months because I'm doing my new charting course and I'm using the time for that. And this week, I have family in, friends in from out of town. I'm just not getting an awful lot done. It'll all change come Tuesday morning. Our guest says goodbye tomorrow. I sit down with my wife, we'll stay home for New Year's and I'm ready to go. And I should be very fresh come Tuesday morning. So when we look at the uh, stock indices, this is a weekly chart. I mean, come on. This market has gone from basically just over 4050 to 4835, almost nonstop. Is there a week where we had a lower week? Well, you won't see it. If you look at the daily chart, you had one correction and then you've come back up and you're on the door of all time highs. Why not go make them tomorrow? You don't fight that you won't make them, bet that you're gonna make them. 
the pattern in the chart had been one of higher lows, higher highs, and then we had that correction. And over the past five, six days, no, I haven't wanted anyone to do anything since the market stepped out of its trend right there. Yes, it's come back up. It hasn't run anywhere at this point in time. In addition, you have a pattern that is bullish. You have the 18-day moving average in red over the 100. The 100 is over the 200. That's a classic bullish pattern. So where's the resistance? All the way up here towards the 4,900 level. That doesn't mean you have to go there, but it means if you do go there, the odds are very strong that that's where the pros will take some money off the table. What's launching the market has been this, the embedded reading. Once you get the red and the blue lines going sideways over 80 for several days or more, and I teach this in my Bollinger Band course, there's a way to come in. Your numbers and your slow stochastic, when you run them by mine, you're going to go, mine don't match up with Iris. You're right. My subscribers to my Bollinger Band course and my subscribers to my daily research, all they have to do is write me at I Epstein at Lynn LLC, and I'll give you the formula that you have to go in and change. I can't do it for you. I have no way to get into your charting service. I've made my charting services work with that, and I have created a suite inside of TradingView, if you use it, that you go on our website under client resources, sign up there, and then we turn it on for you, and then your suite will have all these, including outside days that highlight. It's pretty interesting what it does. But this is bullish. Breaks in the market still getting bought and the trend looking higher. The same identical thing is true in the uh, NASDAQ. When you have the embedded reading, I mentally forget everything else. I, in the course, teach you how on the breaks I'm looking to come in, tell you to buy the market. You're out if the red line closes under 79. And you're looking to go higher to two variables, the Bollinger Band and a window envelope. I don't show window envelopes in this video on YouTube. It is shown in my research videos, and I show you the numbers that you put into them so you can keep up with me every day on them. Window envelopes are real important, by the way. When we come to the Dow, same thing. Do I think you can make it up to the 38,580 level? Yeah. You've got your embedded reading. My chart work has been bullish ever since right here hasn't looked back, and it is still bullish. No change at all from what I see. Is the market getting long tooth? You, do you think so? We haven't had a correction since November. So you know that nothing can grow to the sky. You're on borrowed time. Traders will take some money off the table come the first of the year, and they'll do what they always do. We'll get back into our trading patterns. But at any point, don't you kid yourself, for no reason at all, you can get profit taking set into the market. Doesn't require much when you've gone up eight weeks in a row and each week almost making higher all time highs. And that's what you're doing even now in the Russell as the money has come into that market. Now, when we go to the 10 year note, again, the embedded reading. So take that Bollinger Band course, do yourself a favor, make it your uh, resolution of the year. You're going to go onto the website, you're going to get the course, and boom, you're going to learn what I was talking about there and why this is so important. And hey, when that happens, how come that market keeps going up? What's going on with that? Learn how to work with that. Same in the five-year note. So I'm bullish until the red lines close under 79. And until then, I'm just friendly to these markets. In the dollar index, you're getting to the point of profit taking. Now you just embedded, just now. So if we can get a good rally tomorrow, what do I think the pros are gonna do? Even though there's a light volume day, I think they'll sell into that rally saying, I'll come out of shorts if the red line closes over 21. And until then, I'll use that rally to be short the market. Converse. In the euro, you have the bullish embedded reading. You come out against the Bollinger Band on part of the position, and you're looking to buy on the other part. In other words, the breaks in the market. British pound, no. Uh-uh. Not embedded. This is where I think the pros took all their money off the table. I mentioned that last night. I'm repeating it to you again. This is not the spot where I think they're buying. Then we get to Bitcoin. Now, don't even try to guess what Bitcoin's going to do. The game is 
either the SEC approves Grayscale's ETF or it doesn't. I don't see how it gets away from it. The court order is in place. They'd have to file a motion to stay in some manner. They can do it. But you can see that they're not making it easy for this market, and it's fighting its battle right through here. When we come to the energy, the differential between Brent and WTI keeps climbing. That means it's the supportive factor. It's not, it's leading the market down. Then you would crash the premiums. They're expanding and that's holding the market, so to speak, up. But where's the battleground? You do see this line right here. This line is your 200-day moving average of closes. It's the longest moving average, moving average traders use that represent one year of trading. When you first get up to it and you're overbought, Buying over that number is often a suicide play. It's the first place that the pro trader says, you know, we've come back here. That is, to me right now, a bit of a resistance area. And where's the support? The line in the sand. So I think that they're coming out up here, and I think they're looking at the support at the 18-day average. The same identical thing right here. Look, you got to the 200-day, you stopped, and you're right back to that line in the sand. Is there a trend? No. You have a higher high, lower low pattern. You got overbought, and I think the pros came out of the market. In the heating oil, bearish. Straight out bearish, okay? Whole different word. Lower highs, lower lows. I think the pros are looking at resistance between 259 and 264 and uh, 30. But the range is so broad and sweeping that where do you put a stop that makes sense? And it's difficult. I don't see that you can. So I, I can see the trend is down and that's about it. Net gas, we're starting to get some draws. It is the center of winter time, right? It is the 28th of December. And while Chicago has been 42 degrees tonight, to give you an example, mild as can be. It's not the way it is everywhere. And you're burning into the natural gas, you should. It's very difficult to be super bearish as you enter December and January. Now, as you come out into mid-February and March, yes, you start changing your attitude again because you don't need air conditioning yet and you don't need as much heat. So you gotta understand how the seasonals come into play. Could the market rally a bit more here? Sure, it could. It can get up towards the 248, 250 area, but it's overbought. It's not in a buy mode when you're overbought. I use filters of overbought, oversold, where we're at, what are the dollar risks on each time that I look at a market. So how do you start your year? You're there right now. Go to our website. If you're not a member of my Morning Futures video subscribers, go to the word research at irapstein.com. You can also get through it right here and be certain you learn Bollinger Bands. I think they'll become a mainstay of your trading. If you approach them, understand what you're dealing with. It's certainly going to give you, you're going to go each time one gets hit up or down, you're going to go, hold on. What did I learn about that? That's your goal for 2024. I'm Ira. You have a great weekend. I will catch up with you all over the weekend with our weekly charts. Do look for that. And then I'll see you, of course, in 2024 again. You have a good one. Take care.